Right, I'm gonna do a ball test. I'm gonna do Strixon's ball range. So starting at the cheaper soft feel, then up to the Q-Star. Look at bridging balls like the Q-Star Tour. And then you got their premium balls, Z-Star and Z-Star XV. So we're gonna delve deep into each one of these balls. Now, if you want me to do this with other manufacturers, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe we could do, you know, best cheap ball, best premium ball across all brands as well. Let me know if you wanna see that test. This is just gonna be Strixon's range to kick us off. Obviously much easier for me to get hold of these balls during lockdown, which is why I've done this test. I've collected more data than I've ever collected before. Different way of presenting the numbers as well. What do you get for your money? What do you get in so-called performance? You know, where is the benefits when we go from around 20 quid up to around 40 quid with stops in between? What, what's the point of the different price points? Where do you win? Where do you lose? Should be a fun one. Let's get stuck in. So soft feel. Oh yeah, like that feels uber spongy off the face, like really, really soft. Compare that to the Q-Star. Yeah, it's, a, it's not much in it, it's a fraction firmer. It's a fraction more of a clip. You go Q-Star Tour. So soft feel is out, is like an outstander with its uh, softness. I will miss one of these on the high side in a minute. There we go. Nothing between Q-Star Tour and Q-Star and Feel. They're both on a par. So my ball Z-Star. If anything, it feels a bit softer. So those three really start blending. Z-Star, Q-Star and Q-Star Tour. Yeah, and that's got the clip to it now. So if you do go, if you go XV to soft feel, it's a massive, massive difference. I wouldn't be able to pick any of those as a preferred because I don't really mind. The fact that I miss them all on the low side is what would concern me more and that's not gonna do with anything how that feels. I guess that's more to do with what you wanna buy into. Nine yard chip next. Right, soft feel to kick us off. And as expected, it's uber, uber soft. Like if you're buying a ball because you want it to feel a certain way, that one's gonna be hitting that feel for softness. It's up to the Q-Star and again, like the putter, it just does slightly pick up the audible tone, the clip, the sound. It's that fraction clippier. And we're going to look at the numbers on these nine yard chips and then we're going to go on to some other disciplines as I said earlier. Um, this isn't a data capture set, obviously I captured that literally over the weeks of lockdown because there was a lot of hitting. So Q-Star Tour. Is there a difference in that with the Q-Star? Definitely the soft feel stand out. It just stands out each time at the minute as being that softer feel, like it says on it. Q-Star, Q-Star Tour, don't know. I would say, that, again, they're very, very close in their sounds. Now up to the Z, the ball I game, it's definitely an audible difference. It's not anything like the soft feel. It's a, it's a step, as you'd imagine, and that's, I guess, why they make ranges of balls. You know, they're stepping up in sound, and if sound is something you're buying into, it's going to offer it all and I imagine now I'm going to feel the difference or the same with the XV being that yeah it is that bit clippier definitely is what is it that makes the soft feel which is in effect the cheapest what's the desire for people to have the cheap one feeling so soft is it the idea of stopping it's a it's a funny place we've got ourselves into because XV, well, we'll look at the numbers, but you would imagine XV and Z-Star are gonna be the top performers, but we'll check that out. Yet the sound of them is the opposite and the feel to the soft feel, which is the cheapest. Why are the people who want cheaper balls feeling or thinking they want it to feel soft? Comments below, maybe? Let's look at some numbers. So let's look at the numbers for the nine yard chip shot. Now it's very clear to see that the Z-Star and the Z-Star XV, so the two premium balls, when you get it into this short game area, they blow the other balls away. Higher spin, decent dispersion of spin, really good numbers. Now when it comes to the free cheaper price balls, the Q-Star is the standout there. The Q-Star is a ball there at a really good price, which is spinning 
pretty good for the price. I personally, as someone who would want to play my best, it's no option, it would be Z-Star and Z-Star XV there. But if budget is your option and you want to buy on price but you still want some performance, Q-Star would be the one for me on that test. So I'm going to try and land each one of these balls now 100 yards. I'm using my 52 RTX wedge. So soft feel. I mean, it does feel soft. I know it's called that, but it like feels very, very soft. Now, what I did when I collected data for these balls is I actually hit one and then another one. I didn't hit more than two shots with one ball. I hit the soft field and I hit, and I went through them all, through, through the five balls. You're gonna see me hitting a couple with each. So I can just articulate how they feel, sound in relationship to each other and what that means to me. So I think down at the price, this feel of this ball will definitely make people feel like it's spinny and stopping soft. Definitely would make people think that it's gonna stop quicker and the soft feel sounds soft. So if I compare that up to the Q star, same distance. Again, not much in that. I'd say it's a fraction more of a clip, but not really huge amounts. Again, I'm not sure you would feel the difference between those two, that feels soft. A fraction not as soft as a soft feel. Q star tour. Yeah, there is nothing between Q star, Q star tour for me there. I wouldn't be able to tell which one I'm hitting. So the ball I game, the Z star. See, that now does feel like less cover, softness on the face, a bit more of a clip. It's interesting, isn't it, that the lower end balls, the cheaper balls in the wedge, feel softer, which would make me feel like they're stopping and then they're even slower, where the Z-Star Premium Ball, and I guess the next one in this XV, yeah feels and sounds clippier, louder. Now out of the Strix and Range, the XV is the one that lots of the Tor Pros play and I want to see at the end of this test if I can see why that is the case. Yeah, it's funny. The two premium balls definitely sound firmer. So they sound and in turn feel firmer than the lesser priced of a three. I wonder why we ever got that switched around. So now looking at the 100 yard pitch shot. Again, you've got three standouts here. You've got the Q-Star Tour, amazing tight dispersion of spin and spinning as much as the Z-Star and the Z-Star XV. The soft feel and the Q-Star now spinning less and much bigger dispersion in the spin numbers from the highest spin to the lowest spin. Remember, controlling distance will be obviously to do with ball speed, heights that you send that ball in, but also the spin numbers are gonna make that ball go different distances, maybe peak height slightly differently as well, so they'll land and stop or not differently. The tightness bar one shot of XV and the high spinning and the Z-Star brilliant, but the Q-Star there, for the price is a real standout in the 100 yard point. So for me, Z-Star XV again, performing really good. If you don't care what money you're gonna spend, again, in relationship to that chip, then crossing over onto the 100 yard shot. But Q-Star on this test, 100 yards, absolutely doing fantastically for the price. So seven iron next. So often what happens in the ball test is as you go up through balls and up through lofts, so certainly when you come down in lofts, so you go up your bag, when there's less of an oblique hit, so there's more of a rebound off the face, it's interesting they all start sounding similar. So what happens with the seven iron? Do we notice that difference? Soft feel. Yeah, it feels soft. It definitely feels soft. Not as soft as it did when I hit a wedge. Q-Star. Yeah, that's louder. Q-Star's louder than soft feel. Q-Star tall. So they're now, it's interesting, so those three, they're jumping up in audible sound and in turn feel of firmness, like let's say 5% each time it almost feels like. My ball, the Z-Star, not much between that and the Q-Star Tour, if anything. XV. Yeah. 
it's really small and they're closer. They're definitely getting all neater together in the sound, not as distinctly different. Now looking at the seven iron shots. So if you look at the carry distance, you got three there kind of all doing pretty good near the 170 with my seven iron, which is a good number for me. Q star tour, the Z star and the Z star X. V. The Q star and the soft fill just dropping back a fraction on distance. And then if we look at the peak height, you see the soft fill coming in a little bit lower as well for me in the seven iron distance. Q star tall topping out with the height a little bit more than Z star and the XV, which are both very close with the Q star. Now here's the standout for me when it comes to the seven iron shot. So your highest spinning balls are the soft fill and the Q star. That's probably why the soft fills, well, it's not going as high in a spin spinning so it's going to come in shorter in its distance but look how tight the dispersion is from the highest to the lowest spinning in the Z star and the XV look how tight the dispersion in the tolerances are in the spin where you compare that to Q star tour or the Q star and a little bit the soft feel as well that jumping spin so high spin to lower spin will affect your distance control the z star the xv at this distance for me it's a no-brainer for those two balls if you're someone who wants to play your best don't care about money you just want the best ball even though soft feel is dropping back a little bit in its distance and height it's quite tight in its spin. Really, it's it's hard between those three balls on that one. I'm struggling to choose at the cheaper. I could kind of choose all three. They kind of all got similar dispersions. Possibly if you are a high spin player you, and you want to save money, you might go more Q starry. Where if you're a low spin player and you want to increase spin and you want to save money, you might go Q star and soft feel rather than the Q star tour. So often when we get to this club, it's actually the tone of your driver that's start dictating more the sound. So down at the soft field to kick us off. Like that now makes a decent sound. I mean, I towed that a little bit, so it's going left, but like it's the club overriding the ball in the audible sound now. Q star. Yeah, yeah, I hit that good. Cool, yeah, I'm longer. Lock down me longer. We get to the Q star tour. I'm struggling to tell the difference now between the first two. I felt like I hit that high on the face. It makes a different sound higher on the face. Again, what's happening is this is what I'm hearing more than the ball. So as soon as you take that sound away, I now really can't feel, I can feel where I'm hitting a thing on the face. If it was 5% difference with a seven iron, Let's say you could tell 10, 15% difference in sound stroke feel with the wedge, with the driver, we're down to like one or 2%. It's really close. So Z star and then XV to end. Looking at the numbers so far, XV is looking quite good for me. So I'm quite intrigued to see stroke here, 278. Club head speed 112. In the comments down below, let's say by July, do you reckon I get my club head speed 116 miles an hour? Is there a difference between XV and would it make a difference if there was, subject to the performance difference that we're seeing that would make me not want to game it? Mm, I would say that is a fraction louder. Left that one out to the right a little bit, not as long. I think when we get to the driver, as I said, it's it. it. So just depending on the, the kind of, I reckon if you hit these all with a wooden wood, the old fashioned, you'd really start to hear a difference. And I think there's an interesting point there, isn't it? The ball is so marrying up with the club and they don't need it. It, it just isn't gonna feel or sound anything when you get to this, because they know this is gonna override it. It's 1% at best going from softer, very much blends in the middle with the XV at the end. Sounding a slightly louder, oh, 282. 282 carry. This is crazy what's going on. The all important driver with the golf ball. So what we're seeing for spin numbers is they're all very, very similar. Z star the lowest spinning, Q, uh, Z star XV a fraction more, soft feel low spinning. Like there's not much between those to all those balls. Highest spinning is your XV and the Q star. If you look at the ball speeds, XV doing very, very well, topping out the highest. Soft field doing, uh, coming in at 
the slowest speed. Again, that's kind of in line with what people are saying soft is all about. If you follow any of my golf spies research, they're very keen on saying soft is slow. And this would kind of prove that for me on this test, definitely. Peak heights, really not much in all of those. Lowest ball is the Z star. So again, subject to what your buying premise is, money, uh, don't care what money, you want height, you want more spin, you want low spin, you see what I mean? That you win some, you lose some with each ball, basically. So for me, peak height there, there isn't really a ball that would stand out as topping it for me from the peak heights. I quite like the fact that the XV goes up a little bit higher for some people and others. I like the fact we can keep it down a fraction maybe with the Z star, but it's very small tolerances. And then this is what's interesting. So the average distance between all the balls when it comes to the driver, this is carry distance, is kind of there or thereabouts. XV doing very, very well. Soft feel, even though it's slow, look what its average distance is doing. It's good. I mean, if you're buying a ball for your driver only, you're gonna discount all the other categories. You could literally buy any one of those balls, possibly XV you'd buy that first with all the other bits in there that came out of it with the driver. But I mean, if it's just driving distance you're after, any of those balls are gonna do it for you. I can't see a real standout winner when it comes to the driver. I think the actual person driving is the biggest thing that's determining any difference in those. So running total, should we have a look? So basically for price, Q-Star, Q-Star Tour was picked three times in the price bracket, where the soft feel was only picked twice. So if it's just price, soft feel's where you're gonna be. If none of this really matters, soft feel, cheapest ball, it's gonna do everything you want. But if you want to just bridge towards that performance level, Q-Star, Q-Star Tour, we're both really bridging that gap and is a good ball for that kind of medium price you're picking on price, but you want to sneak the best performance out of the ball as well. If you're going to bridge the gap between performance coming back towards price, Q-Star Tour was picked twice in the performance bracket and three times in the price. So as expected, Z-Star and Z-Star XV both were picked four times the most picked ball, but only in performance, so obviously never really got picked for price. For me, it's a no-brainer. I would use those two premium balls. But if I was buying balls, if budget was really high up on my what ball shall I use premise. Now, bear in mind, people buy balls at different levels. So people buy balls so they can lose them. Some people are buying balls with winnings and they're winning balls at club. So they will be able to sneak more up to these and it not really make a financial impact on them as much. But if I was buying for price, but I wanted to keep the performance as kind of as high as I could, that's your winner. Which is really interesting, isn't it? It's a good price and it's like sneaking into tall performance at times. Now, when it came to these two balls, I've been gaming the Z Star, doing this test, going a bit deeper down the rabbit hole, hitting more shots, really getting a broader look. I'm definitely gonna sneak over onto XV. This is the one used on tour the most, and I can kind of see why. And it also, as well, I think from the whole test, what was really interesting is if you're not the kind of golfer who's looking for that 0.2, that 0.06, that 0.08, that 0.8 improvement, if you're that player looking for eight shots of improvement, you might not find it here. What was really clear from the data, I think, is that you could see there were gains. You would gain and then you would lose. So you would build your decision around your game, your skills, but also you would build your decision around how important is that 0.6 advantage over the person using the cheaper ball to you. Because that 0.6 of an advantage can be given away with one shot out of bounds. It can be given away so cheaply and so easily. So it's when it comes to the ball market, you're gonna find that the decisions are based on really small percentages, which is why it's really hard to see them unless you do take the time to do the test in the way I've done and even longer to try and find those minuscule gains. I mean, they're all decent balls, aren't they? Which ones would you choose and why in the comments down below? Is it based on price? Is it based on performance and price? Is it just performance? Let me know. If, you, again, you want to see me do this test with other brands, maybe just covering their brand or brackets of, you know, what's the best ball at this price? What's the best ball at this price across all brands? Let me know. We'll do it. It'll be fun. And also, if you want me to do this test, which I've got plans to do with lots of amateur golfers, different speed, different abilities to see if we see these differences or not let me know down there as always thanks for watching hope that helps keep safe as always speak to you soon